In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install Mac OS X version 10.11 El Capitan on a 2006 Apple Mac Pro. Now, there's a few things you're going to need before you get started. Um, so, you're going to need the first thing you're going to need is a supported Mac. A supported Mac is something you've got to have in order for this to work. So, it can be any type of Mac. It can be a MacBook, MacBook Pro. It just has to support uh, El Capitan. Uh, the next thing you're going to need is some way to attach a second hard drive to your supported Mac. Now you can do this uh, in one of two ways. You can either take the drive out of the Mac Pro that you want to install OS X on and connect it either using a SATA to USB adapter or some other way to your target Mac or your uh, source Mac I should say. or you can put uh, the Mac Pro in target disk mode and connect its hard disk to your supported Mac via FireWire. Now, in this, in this demonstration, I'm going to be uh, just connecting a laptop SATA hard disk uh, to a supported 2007 MacBook Pro, which is what I'm going to be installing OS X on. So, before we even start uh, preparing the uh, source machine, uh, we need to create a uh, El Capitan installer drive. Now you can you're gonna have to do this on your supported Mac because um, uh, if you try to download El Capitan from the App Store using the Mac Pro running line or something uh, it will not let you download it. It'll tell you that uh, this version of Mac OS X or this app is incompatible uh, with this Macintosh. So you're gonna have to use a supported Mac to download it and to make the USB disk. But since I've already downloaded the uh, app file onto this machine, uh, I will be uh, giving you the instructions on how to make it uh, using a screen capture in this machine. So what I'm going what I'm going to go ahead and do now is just pause the video here and uh, switch over to my Mac Pro, where I will show you um, the steps to create a bootable El Capitan USB drive. So I'll be right back. All right, so I'm here on my Target Mac and uh, or my uh, Mac with the uh, El Capitan app already on it. So we will go ahead and uh, create a bootable uh, USB install drive. So the first thing you're going to need to do is go ahead and open up Disk Utility. Uh, first, tr find the uh, drive you want to uh, put the uh, installer on. In this case, I'm going to use the second partition of uh, my external hard disk here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is go over to the erase tab and just name it something like this and select erase and erase. Alright, so now we can just go ahead and exit disk utility and now what, we're gonna, what we want to do is uh, open up terminal. Now you're going to want to type this command. Uh, first of all, make sure uh, your OS X El Capitan installer app is in your applications folder. So you're going to want to um, run this command and ensure uh, the location where it says volume is set to the same name uh, as the drive you just created. So once that's set, you can just go ahead and press enter, type your password, and the creation of the drive will take place here. So this will take about I'd say about five or ten minutes, maybe longer, depending on the speed of your USB drive. So I'll just go ahead and resume the video when it's done. All right, so once the uh, USB drive has finished being created, you can now switch over to your supported uh, El Capitan Mac. Now, this is the earliest supported Mac uh, with El Capitan. Uh, this is a 2007 MacBook Pro. Um, and as you can see, I have a hard disk installed. Uh, this is, of course, going to be the target drive where we will be installing uh, OS X El Capitan on. And we will then be using this drive to boot the Mac Pro. So, um, so once you've plugged your uh, USB drive in, as you can see, I've done so already, uh, you can just go ahead and turn the machine on and boot from it. Just holding down option so I can select the drive to boot from. 
All right, and as you can see, it detects my install OS 10 El Capitan drive. So we'll go ahead and select it. So this will take a little bit of time to boot up. So once it's done booting, I'll resume the video and uh, show you the installation process. All right, so as you can see here, the El Capitan installer has booted. So now what you're gonna to wanna to do is go to the utilities menu in the menu bar and select disk utility. So just wait a second for that to load. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is select the uh, hard disk. Now, of course, it's gonna be different if you, if you connect it through Firewire, it'll just show it with a Firewire logo, but nonetheless, it will be here. So what you're going to want to do is select the drive, click the Erase tab, ensure that GUID Partition Map is selected, and that OS X Extended Journal is selected, and just name it something, so I'll just name it L Capitan, and select Erase. Alright, so that is just finished. We can close that and click continue. So just on this screen, just select your drive that you just formatted and select continue. And the installation will proceed as normal from here. So uh, yeah, what I'll just go ahead and do is, re is uh, resume the video after the installation completes and show you the steps necessary to modify the install to boot on the Mac Pro. So I'll be right back. Alright, so the install has just completed and um, now I'm just waiting for it to boot up after it finished. And uh, once it does, you can just go ahead and set up the uh, the machine as normal through the uh, uh, setup when it boots up. And uh, then you'll be at a desktop and once, once I'm there, I will show you what to do next. So I'll resume the video once uh, I get it all set up and ready to go. Alright, so as you can see I have just finished setting the machine up and it is now uh, running perfectly. So now what you're going to want to do is shut down the machine and uh, connect the drive of, or connect the drive containing your um, El Capitan install, which is of course right there now. Uh, and you want to uh, boot into a different install of OS X. So if you have another drive, or if you uh, connected your installer drive externally to your Mac, uh, or your target drive externally to your Mac, just go ahead and boot off your current OS X installation. Um, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm, I'm just going to uh, connect this drive uh, to my uh, SATA to USB adapter, which I was using for the install drive and then connect it to my Mac Pro and show you the proper modifications that you need to make to it to make it bootable. So I'm gonna go ahead and resume on my Mac Pro with a screen recording and show you what to do from there. So I'll be right back. All right, so once you have booted back into your other OS X install, uh, you can start making modifications to the drive. So uh, just connect the uh, El Capitan drive some way to your Mac, uh, it can either be through USB as I've done, through Firewire, or you could have the drive internally uh, and while booting another OS X install from a different drive. If you're on your um, your uh, uh, supported El Capitan Mac, you can either use your Mac Pro or a uh, supported El Capitan Mac to do this. Um, either will work just fine. So you're just going to need one file uh, to uh, put on the drive. Uh, it's called the uh, Piker Alpha Mac OS X bootloader. Uh, this is the GitHub site for it here. Uh, you just go to pre-built and download one of these two files. Now the regular boot.efi file here, uh, if you have a Mac flashed uh, graphics card, will display a black background with a white Apple logo on boot. And the gray, uh, the boot underscore gray.efi file here, will display the classic gray background with a darker gray uh, Apple logo. So I usually just download the uh, boot gray one here. So you just click on it and then select view raw. And once that's done, uh, we can start making modifications to the drive. So 
I have already downloaded this before and copied it into this folder on my desktop. And if you did download the one uh, with gray in it, you're going to want to rename it uh, to just boot.efi. So now what you're going to want to do is open up your El Capitan drive, go to System, Library, Core Services, and look for boot.efi. As you can see, it's right here. So what you're just going to want to do is just delete it and empty the trash, of course. Select Remove All Items. And now all you need to do is drag and drop your modified boot.efi uh, in the same location. Now one thing you're probably going to want to do is just right click on it, select Get Info, and just uh, select Locked just to make it uh, like the original. And the last step is uh, just close all your finder windows, select go in the uh, menu bar up here, select go to folder, and now just drag and drop your El Capitan uh, hard disk on it, and then type slash USR. Now go to standalone, i386, and once again you will see another boot.efi. So you can just go ahead and delete that one as well. Empty the trash. And once again, copy your modified one in there. And you can just go ahead and clean it up to make it look better. So uh, yeah, that's all the modifications you need to make. So now you can just go ahead and inject the drive, uh, put it in your Mac Pro, and start up the machine. So I will show you that right now. Alright, so as you can see, I have now gotten the uh, Target drive, or the uh, El Capitan drive rather, uh, somewhat uh, ghetto mounted inside the uh, Mac Pro here. Now when you do install the drive to the Mac Pro, uh, make sure it is the only drive if you have a uh, PC graphics card as I do. Now I should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video but I uh, forgot about this. Uh, before you can actually run El Capitan on a original Mac Pro like this, you have to upgrade the graphics card if it has the original uh, GeForce uh, I think it's a 7300 GT, or the uh, upgraded model uh, had the uh, ATI Radon X1900 XT. Uh, those cards are only supported in Lion and older, and will not work in El Capitan. So um, what you're going to need to do before you do uh, anything with El Capitan is install a newer graphics card. Uh, any PCI, or any PC rather, compatible graphics card will work in the Mac Pro. Uh, you just won't be able to see a, uh, anything at boot up. Um, this is of course a PC graphics card so uh, I won't uh, be able to actually see anything uh, while the machine's booting. But um, if you do or if you are looking to get a Mac Flash graphics card I'm as far as I know the best one you can get is like a Radon HD 5770 I think I know it's a 5000 series, I'm not exactly sure if that's it, but um, they are quite pricey, so I wouldn't recommend doing that because the only real advantage is that you get a boot screen. So I would just recommend just installing any PC graphics card and it should work just fine. So um, what I'm going to go ahead and do now is uh, make sure that stays up there, it seems to have come down. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, what I'm just going to go ahead and do now is boot up the machine and we will see if it works. So here we go. Now since I am using a PC graphics card, like I said, I won't be able to see anything. Uh, that's why I make sure it's the only drive installed so I know, uh, so I know that it will boot from it. So let's just go ahead and wait and see what happens. I'll go ahead and move over to my display so we can uh, see when it boots up. Might take a little bit because it is off a uh, 5400 RPM hard drive of course. So uh, yeah, let's just uh, wait and see what happens.
Alright, we still haven't gotten anything yet, so let's just wait a little bit longer and it should come up in a few minutes here. Or a few seconds, rather. Alright, so my monitor received a signal, and yes, it has booted. So let me just go ahead and type in the password. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the system. So yep, there's El Capitan, fully booted on a Mac Pro 1.1. So yeah, works perfectly fine. Uh, let's just go ahead and do about this Mac. Uh, so yeah, you can see my Mac Pro right here. Now I have upgraded this from the original uh, processors to two uh, 3 GHz quad-core Intel Xeon processors. Uh, this originally had two, two dual-core 2 GHz Xeons. So in order to get this machine to properly detect these processors, I had to flash it to a Mac Pro uh, 2.1 as you can see there. But uh, this same procedure will work on the 2.1 which doesn't run Yosemite or which doesn't run Mountain Lion or newer natively either. So uh, yeah, it's basically the 1 comma 1 and 2 comma 1 are just the same machines, just uh, they just came factory with different processors. So yeah, uh, flashing a 1 comma 1 to a 2 comma 1 firmware uh, will effectively make it uh, the exact same machine as a 2 comma 1. So yeah. So as you can see, it is El Capitan. Go back into the uh, main about this Mac window here. You can see it is El Capitan version 10.11. Now, uh, the 10.11.1 update, as well as other updates, should work perfectly fine without uh, causing any issues with the uh, bootloader, or, or it shouldn't cause any uh, issues booting. So uh, you can just go ahead and install any updates you need to on this machine, and it should work uh, perfectly fine. So yeah, uh, that is how to install uh, Mac OS 10 version 10.11 El Capitan on a 2006 Apple Mac Pro. Hope you enjoyed this video.